Good evening, everyone. Um, so this will be essentially in French, our presentations. And so if you're looking for translation, channel one is English and channel two is French. Excellence, chers amis, mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue. Je vous remercie d'être avec Dear friends, I thank you for being with us tonight to discuss the Ivory Coast and its, its successful management of crisis exit at the time of when the uh, UN mission uh, of peacekeeping uh, is about to close its doors and close its presence in our country. To f on this theme, we um, gathered a high-level panel. You see in the program their biographical notice. I would like to thank this ex His Excellency Mr. Marcel Amontano, who is sitting on my left, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ivory Coast, who has a rich political career and a long experience of uh, being a high functionary for the state. We are happy to have him with us to talk about the efforts of the Ivory Coast to exit from the crisis and the initiatives undertaken by his government to facilitate uh, the end of this uh, mission. He will also tell us about the teachings uh, from this Partnership for Peace. And we'll talk about all this in the framework of the campaign of the I launched by the Ivory Coast today to have a seat of non-permanent member at the Security Council. I thank also thank Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix, sitting at my right, who, as you know, uh, is now uh, at the head of the Department of Peacekeeping Operations in the UN. After 25 years of experience, political e and diplomatic experience at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in France. We have a new dynamic, new thinking animates the United Nations regarding peacekeeping. Mr. Lacroix will um, tell, tell us about the, how pertinent the experience of the Ivory Coast is uh, for other countries where missions of peacekeeping uh, will help prepare their exit strategy. Finally, I would like to thank Mrs. Elizabeth Lindermeyer, professor at Columbia University and uh, international, international Organization and UN Studies Specialization. She's a former high functionary of the UN and followed very closely the Ivory Coast crisis and its solution. And also as a, an uh, ac academic, she will uh, tell us about her own reflections after listening to the f first two reporters. So, Mr. Mis Mr. Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, I give you the floor. Thank you very much. I would like um, oh, to thank uh, IPI for giving us this opportunity to address so such a rich audience. And um, and at this uh, high-level panel and to take advantage of this opportunity to renew, the, to ex once again express the um, ex uh, gratitude of the Ivory uh, 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 government and uh, to the United Nations and all the part international partners who have hel helped our country to reestablish uh, peace and stability. We also want to thank, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome the members of the panel, and also uh, uh, see uh, such a such a wide audience. Um, uh, and also, we want to thank uh, the members, the permanent members, the member states of the uh, mem permanent member states of the UN, and members of the diplomatic corps, and also the experts, all the experts, 
for their presence uh, in, uh, in this discussion. The theme, theme which has brought us together today, which is a uh, successful exit uh, uh, from the crisis and the lessons of the uh, operation of the United Nations in, in Ivory Coast, partakes of a great interest uh, for, Ivory for Ivory Coast and for the United Nations. It also op offers us the opportunity to share with you the reforms and the actions, uh, the most important actions that have been carried out since the election of President uh, Alassane Uttara at the uh, head of the uh, Ivory Coast in order to normalize, definitively normalize the situation in our country and to create the conditions for the closure of the uh, UNOC in agreement with the uh, Security Council. It's also an opportunity to share with you the elements of success of the um, UNOC, which uh, um, could, from our point of view, contribute to the success of operations, the peacekeeping operations of the United, United Nations in general. The United, uh, the Ivory Coast and the uh, UNOC, uh, this is a long history of joint work, which uh, going back to 2004 and which uh, uh, required the adoption by the Security Council of 51 resolutions of uh, uh, the, uh, including the Committee of uh, Sanctions and also hundreds of hours of negotiations in order to arrive at a definitive peace. Before closing uh, it in uh, June, next June, the UNOC and is um, already considered uh, a historic su success, which is in contrast with the most of the uh, peacekeeping operations of the UN. And uh, underlining, underlying this uh, point of view is uh, often emphasized uh, the um, success of the uh, exit strategy of the UNOC uh, uh, since um, uh, uh, Feb uh, February uh, 2017 in the climate and atmosphere of peace and all of the um, UN peacekeepers and, the, and almost the, all of the uh, civilian personnel. Um, the success of the UNOC and its, its advantage has, has been mostly gauged by the, by the fact that the Ivory Coast has, has, has recovered uh, the basis for, for a, a sustainable peace. And in addition, our, our country uh, uh, again benefits from a solid economy and diversification, which has known since uh, 2012 a, uh, an annual growth rate of uh, uh, about 9%. Uh, another impressive sign of the uh, normalization situation in our country is the organization by the government of uh, several elections between 2010 and 2016 in uh, conditions of transparency, of inclusiveness, and of uh, secure, uh, exemplary security. Uh, that is the case also, especially of the uh, presidential election in, uh, in 2015, of, of uh, the two, th two legislative elections, um, and in 2011, only eight months after the uh, uh, the end of the uh, post-electoral crisis in 2016, and also uh, the local elections in uh, municipal uh, and uh, regional uh, elections in 2013, and the constitutional referendum in, um, in October 2016. What are the actions and what are the reforms that the government, uh, Ivory, Ivory government has undertaken, especially beginning in 2012, in order to succeed, in order to succeed the process of um, exiting the crisis and 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 arrive and uh, succeeding in lifting the regime of sanctions and the closing of the um, uh, UNICE, uh, be uh, aware of the uh, distrust that uh, that has provo been provoked, uh, that is provoked by uh, invest investors and insurers, and also by the um, sanctions uh, by the UN sanctions, and also by the uh, operation of peacekeeping. Uh, the, the president has, has asked the government to create the necessary conditions for lifting sanctions and for the for, for the closing of the um, UNICE. So, uh, to this end, the government and has has, uh, has had this in its in its uh, uh, mind uh, to, to closing the UNICE from the start. It, it, to this end, the government has adopted the priorities priorities for the crisis exiting. Uh, that were laid down by the Security Council and has uh, broken them down into uh, objectives and actions. These objectives concern especially national reconciliation and uh, social cohesion. And also setting up uh, the institutions which will be in charge of security and def defense and also reinforcing the rule of law and protecting human rights. The first objective is establishing national reconciliation and, and social cohesion. 
one of the uh, first actions taken by the president was the creation of the com dialogue commission, the, the commission of dialogue, uh, truth and reconciliation, the CDVR, on 13th of July 2011, in order to consolidate the process of national con reconciliation. The CDVR allowed us to um, focus on the origin of the crisis that the uh, country has on, has uh, had and to uh, in, in, uh, compensate the victims. And uh, the latter point was uh, assigned to the National Commission of Reconciliation and Indemnization of the Victims. It was established the 24th of March in 2015. The then, uh, by uh, uh, the, um, um, the, the Minister of, Ind of Indemnization was established. The government also adopted in February 2015 the National Program of Social Cohesion in order to uh, promote national unity, peace, and national reconciliation. The government uh, also undertook to s definitively settle uh, questions of uh, conflict, conflict producing uh, questions such as uh, the rural land and the and nationality and that was uh, uh, there were two laws adopted in uh, August of 2013 regarding the uh, rural land the the new administration created the agents of agency of a uh, rural land the AF the a4 and has also set up the uh, the PNSFR which is the Pro national program for security of uh, rural, uh, rural land and concerning nationality the um, new directives uh, encompassing um, consensus measures were were, uh, were in con contained in the Accord of Linus Mar Mar uh, Marcuses. The government also uh, took uh, courageous steps against uh, statelessness, which um, uh, was were welcomed by the international community. Uh, the examples are especially the uh, special law of August 2013 permitting the uh, certain categories to obtain uh, nationality by declaration. Thus. More than 7,000 people obtained their citizenship pa papers, and 6,000 others uh, obtained their uh, birth certificates. Uh, was also the uh, was also a question of the Declaration of Abidjan, the, the eliminating um, the statelessness, which was adopted on 25 February of 2015, and which was made uh, made the, uh, the Ivory Coast a champion of the struggle against statelessness. In the, on the public plane, the uh, the president. Uh, um, took action against the, uh, uh, reached out to the opposition so that they, they continue the dialogue and the, and the majority of the opposition uh, um, uh, entered the uh, per permanent um, framework of dialogue, the CD CPD, and it was adopted in the presence of the opposition in the uh, First Assembly, National Assembly of the, th of the Third Republic. The second objective is rebuilding the institutions uh, responsible for security and defense and ensuring pa peace and stability of the country. The rapid normalization of the situation in Ivory Coast beginning in 2012 relies, has relied largely on the, succeed of the success of the oper operations of disarmament, demobilization, and reinsertion, the DDR, and the reform of the, of the sector of the security sector, the RSS, uh, thanks to the leadership of President uh, Alessandro Utara, who uh, allowed uh, the, their engagement uh, as never in the past, and then in the uh, National Council of Security, the CNS, and, and instituted by a, dis the, the, uh, uh, dec dec a decree of the 8th of August 2012, and the, pre and, uh, the president also created on, in August 2012 a, an, a unique entity charged with uh, the DDR, uh, which is the um, authority for the, uh, for the disarmament, um, demobilization, and reintegration of the ex-combatants, ex the ADDR and was placed on the authority of the National Council of Security. And in addition, for more effectiveness, the president also fixed the uh, length of, uh, of the execution of the DDR to three years, beginning in October 2012 until the 30th of June to, um, to 2015. And he also ordered its m m financing would be major, mostly done by national resources. Thus, in October 2012, from October 2012 to October 2015, uh, for, uh, some uh, uh, out of 2010, 210 million uh, dollars uh, devoted to the DDR, 144 million, uh, that is 68.5 percent, were uh, uh, were contributed, contributed by the state, and much more if you uh, bring it up to today, and it was carried out. Um, uh, finished in uh, June 2015, the, D 15, the DDR of the Ivory Coast is a success by its uh, results 
and also by the new norms that established and have made it uh, uh, this, uh, second generation of DDR, according to the expression of General Babakar Gay. The ADDR has allowed the reintegration and the reinsertion of 93% of ex-combatants. Uh, I'll give you the numbers. That's 69,505 ex-combatants out of a total of 74,068 ex-combatants uh, were, were identified by the ADR and it was also allotted to collecting more than 3.3 million um, munitions and more than 39,000 arms and explosives. Its success and its originality are also due to the principle of resocialization of the ex-combatants. Concerning the RSS, the government has adopted a strategy of reform of the security sector, reform of the army, as also of the uh, law on um, the programming the military and the security of uh, domestic uh, security forces. The third objective is re reinforcing the rule of law, protecting and promoting um, the rights of uh, human rights. The government has made re respecting human rights and uh, reinforcing the rule of law a priority in the framework of its program of post-crisis normalization. It's also in this uh, context, was set up uh, a National Commission of Human Rights, um, which was uh, set up in December in 2013, and has undertaken a deep going reform of the um, judicial sector, aiming to gar further guarantee the, its independence and its impartiality. In, uh, in order to um, uh, do this, uh, this carry this, this out even more, the, uh, the president also. Um, um, set up uh, in uh, the 20, uh, 20 July 2011, uh, the um, uh, action, the, 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 uh, the justice, the, pre the, the commission, National Commission of Inquiry, the CNE, and the uh, Special in Inquiry U Unit and Instruction, the CSEI, established in June of 2014. And um, this um, allow, also is, uh, is also set up uh, the, national, um, uh, the National Commission of Inquiry. And uh, the um, the uh, the special unit of uh, instruction, the CSEI, which was established in January 2014, which replaced the uh, inquiry, the uh, special uh, inquiry uh, unit, the CSE, which was um, charged with with care with with um, investigating the most active, uh, six, uh, extreme crimes, the Constitution in the th of the Third Republic, uh, which was which started out in November 2016, allowed definitive uh, allowed uh, to completely uh, end this. Uh, diff Difficult crisis period, and the uh, it's uh, this this new era of peace that of uh, our country, uh, re despite the uh, the uh, turbulence uh, the recently um, uh, 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 seen, has also adjust adjusted in uh, uh, in uh, uh, getting out uh, exiting the crisis. What are the lessons that can be drawn? from the success of the UNOC in, in terms of improving the effectiveness of the operations of peacekeeping. The success of the uh, UNOC uh, sh uh, po points to uh, several elements. First of all, the existence of an agreement and a, a credible agreement of uh, politi uh, political process, the success of the UNOC, also explained by the quality of the uh, uh, political accord of uh, Ouagadou, uh, signed on the 4th of May 2017, and the, uh, the preceding accords, which were also uh, an important uh, and a decisive element in the, in the peace. Uh, secondly, the establishment of a true uh, partnership partnership between the um, uh, um, peacekeeping uh, operation and the government based on mutual agreement and confidence. And the uh, operate peacekeeper peace uh, operation did not seek to, um, did not aim to uh, uh, substitute for the government and was carried out in an atmosphere of confidence and um, th to end the conflict. This partnership was established between government and the UNOC beginning in 2011 and 2012 and, and led to success of uh, getting out of the crisis, exiting the crisis. The third element, uh, the unity and the firmness of the uh, Security Council and the mobilization of the international community in order to impose the respect of the resolutions of the Security Council and the, uh, the agree peace agreement and including by the use of force the adoption of the uh, mandate of certification of the President's election in 2010 and the respect of the um, re election results would only be possible because of the international mobilization and the firmness of the Security Council. Uh, the third, uh, fourth element 
is a very strong participation, uh, national participation in uh, exiting the crisis uh, in uh, thanks to the leadership, the uh, will, uh, and the, uh, the financial capacity of the state. And the, th the fifth element is the, st the close cooperation with the uh, ins regional institutions, the uh, ECOWAS, and the uh, U uh, African Union and the, and the neighboring countries that's allowed us to create a political environment, a security environment, a regional security environment favorable to getting out, exiting the crisis, especially on the questions of ref refugees and um, control of the, of, the, um, of the borders. And in addition, it's also allowed uh, regional contingents uh, to, that were well adapted to the terrain. It is clear that the leadership of the president has allowed the success of the DDR and the, uh, and, the uh, and also the recon national reconciliation, and also the the, the um, exiting uh, the, the process of exiting the Korea's crisis. In conclusion, I would like to um, say that we cannot uh, exhaust the theme of this uh, report in a simple session, and the other panelists are certainly going to raise other uh, perspectives. Um, However, in my opinion, the success of the UNOC is due in large part to the sim symbiosis between it, the UNOC, and the government in setting up and implementing the different actions uh, for, for uh, crisis uh, exiting. And also the excellent personal relations existing with the president and the main ministers and the special representative of the general secretary. Uh, as it was the case with the predecessor, but also uh, with the uh, heads of the departments of the uh, um, operations of uh, um, peacekeeping. Nevertheless, the relations of, comprehension, uh, of confidence and uh, underst mutual understanding between the President and the Secretary General of the United Nations constitu it constitutes a keystone of our success. So the lessons of our country uh, are drawn from the action of the UNOC and our, and our own um, um, involvement in the framework of the uh, crisis exiting and will certainly aid in reinforcing the efficiency and the, uh, um, of the peacekeeping operations and, to, uh, and uh, organizing priorities of countries that are exiting crises. And, and, and uh, for all these reasons, in order to uh, exchange our, ex our experience with the uh, international community, the Ivory Coast, Coast is a candidate for a uh, a seat of a non-permanent member in the Security Council of the United Nations for the period of 2018-2019. And uh, it's also been uh, 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 upheld by the, um, uh, by the um, Union, the African Union. Thank you, Mr. Minister. The floor is, I give the floor to Mr. Lacroix. Mr. Minister? This is the, the director, Youssef Maimoud, Excellency, M ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to. I want to thank the IPI and the permanent mission the, of the UN to uh, organize this uh, meeting, and especially His Excellency Minister Marcella Mantano to uh, uh, share with us uh, the experience of Ivory Coast and, and the peacekeeping operations. As you reminded, Mr. Mahmoud, I came to the UN only a week ago uh, when the organization will deepen and intensify its work to uh, make our op operations more efficient, more responsible, and, and more efficient. And we are all, we all agree to recognize that we must uh, improve, but it is important to appreciate uh, successes of the U of operations, uh, peacekeeping operations of the UN, and the Ivory Coast is clearly a success, and we must draw constructive lessons from it, just as is the case with your country. Of course, we have, Mr. You have, M Mr. Minister recall the primary condition, the existence of a solid political framework. And in the case of Ivory Coast, it was the case. And the, it's the fundamental element that gives its meaning to an operation. And in the case of the action of the UN in Ivory Coast, this element was always there. It's the fundamental principle that must guide and support our action. Of course, there are other elements that are also important. 
one of the first one that I want to underline is the importance to establish constructive relations between peacekeeping operations and host countries. And in this country, leadership is an essential factor, especially for a mission with a solid political mandate like ONUC. In this, the leadership of uh, Ivory Coast Authority was uh, there. I want to uh, um, hail the, the work that was made by our special representatives and uh, and our current uh, special representative to uh, acknowledge uh, the work that was done by Ishatomi Daoudou and his close collaborations with the government and the Ivory Coast population, which allowed him to uh, ac achieve his mandate successfully. And also uh, the courage and the determination of his predecessors without f forgetting all the teams of ONUC. The second ele important element is that we see a transformation of the uh, peacekeeping operations and an evolution in the countries that host them. Uh, when the Ivory Coast authorities uh, asked for uh, the help of the U UN, the country was cut in half, and uh, there were uh, forces uh, by French forces and international forces. At the time, there were frequent violations of the ceasefire and also violation of human rights. The evolution of the situation in the Ivory Coast over the years uh, led the UN to modify its mandate and its military objectives. The, it is important to constantly examine the operation of peacekeeping to make sure that they, co they continue to be adequate and that uh, you can achieve the priority task in the UN. The UN the oper peacekeeping operations regularly send teams to assess the mission so that in a cooperative work with the operation and the secretariat here in New York, recommendations are made to the Security Council on whether the mandate, mandate is, is pertinent and it achieved its goals. If we speak today of a success story, the situation wasn't always simple. Before the presidential election of 2010, the image of ONUC was negative because of problems of uh, sexual exploitation and abuse, and also too, too timid uh, in intervention. So we, we took a certain number of measures to give back a positive image of the ONUC to the, uh, among the uh, Ivory Coast population. And this arm, this arm reform uh, the security sector and civil protection. There were other problems and negative episodes, attacks against populations and again UN troops, especially the one in 2012. In the, in the city of Niabli. Another lesson, very important, and you mentioned it, Mr. Minister, is the importance of the leadership of the Security Council. And here I would like to mention some important decisions taken by the Council that contribute to the success of ONUC. Not notably, the decision, very significant, decision to certify the elections of 2010, an unprecedented role that was given to ONUC uh, at the request of uh, the Ivory Coast authorities and which was very important for what happened later. The certification of presidential elections was a decisive political tool to s resolve the problem of electoral contest and also en enabled us to found the use of forces uh, in the, during the post-electoral crisis. This was a very positive at the level of the efficiency of our action and also 
at the level of the perception of the population regarding the credibility and the efficiency of the mission. The Security Council also uh, supported positively when taking initiatives uh, related to uh, cooperation intermissions of West Africa, which allowed us to uh, maximize the efficiency. And this is also an important lesson to remember the re, uh, rapid uh, intervention force and in, in the cooperation between the two operations was very successful and again was an experience for the future. The Council also proceed regularly to an ass criti critical assessment of the mandate that allowed to avoid a mission creep, as we say in English, and this was also very beneficial to gradually draft pers exit perspectives for the operation. The fifth lesson, the sixth, is that the UN peacekeeping operations have a lot more chances uh, to succeed if there is a coalition of international partners that work together for the same object, for the same goal. And in the, in the framework of a political process established with measures of ev uh, regular assessment, the f foundation of the success of ONUC rests on various efforts that all accumulated media mediations by the African Union, the Burkina Faso, troop, peacekeeping troops of, of CEDAW that were uh, re by the UN and also constant effort by civil society, the engagement of French forces to uh, help the UN and involvement also of multilateral and bilateral partners. In the framework of the system of the UN and beyond the UNUC, the support of agencies of UNOWAS that was very important to federate the perceptions and views regarding the result of the elections of 2010. Another lesson that merits uh, to be highlighted, maybe the most important, is that the peacekeeping operations can reach their goal and end their presence uh, in the host countries, as soon as the host country is a responsible partner determined to honor his duties and responsibilities. And this is obviously the case of uh, the Ivory Coast all along. The peacekeeping operations cannot be substituted to the national political will and the efforts of the government to solve the problems that generated the crisis. They must lean on a dynamic, a will imp uh, imposed by the authorities of the host country. During the last six years, considerable progress were recorded on many fronts in Ivory Coast, thanks to the will and the work of I Ivory Coast people themselves, with the support of RDC and other partners, as you said, Mr. Minister. Today, we have a consolidated environment after three electoral processes during a peace uh, climate uh, and, and a c economic growth, uh, better uh, process of uh, security and uh, of um, uh, an increased capacity uh, for uh, human rights. You mentioned this, Mr. Minister. It, it, there is, o o there remains a certain number of things to do in cert some countries in the West, in the frontier border with Li Liberia. That we must make additional efforts for national cohesion. But what is today clear 
for everybody is that ONUC can close because the Security Council, the General Secretary, and the Department of Peacekeeping Operation all totally trust the government and the population of Ivory Coast to um, be at the level of their uh, challenges. It is with satisfaction and confidence that we can turn this page and show that the UN are also capable of putting an end to operations with success and confidence. To conclude, I wish to thank the organizer for this important initiative. The historical meaning of what was accomplished in, I in the Ivory Coast with ONC must not be underestimated, it must be highlighted, and I'm glad to have this opportunity to speak about this success today in the framework of this discussion. I think we must deepen our analysis of the teachings uh, of ONUC, and I thank IPI to have done this work. And I would like to end by saying a word about the candidacy of the Ivory Coast for a uh, non-permanent member of uh, at the Security Council because it's a sign of the invo in commitment of this country to uh, give back and, and also say that the, they've turned the page. Also, pay homage to the action of Ivory Coast in its commitment in the uh, in the. Um, peacekeeping operations because Ivory Coast has already materialized this, enga this uh, engagement and it's also a sign that we uh, are very thankful for of the will uh, uh, to be an actor for peace and for this you uh, deserve our thanks. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Lacroix. Elizabeth has the floor. I am very much in. Uh, I am always comfortable sitting uh, with with him, with my partner. I want to first uh, welcome, uh, very much welcome, uh, warmly welcome, Mr. Minister, the Minister, and also express my admiration <laughs> for the work, the, the extraordinary work the in Ivory Coast that was uh, has accomplished in the. Uh, the uh, going toward a dur durable peace, and I was also impressed by your description of the mechanisms uh, that were set up uh, in only five years, and also uh, are almost uh, a, a book that can be presented to students, uh, which set up the uh, conditions that are necessary in order to uh, arrive at a, uh, a peace uh, and consolidated peace in a country. I want to also uh, thank uh, the IPI for having organized uh, and taken this initiative to uh, organize this dialogue today and, and this exchange of opinion. And uh, particularly, it's a, it's a good time to do it right now because there's a certain number of operations, uh, peacekeeping operations, that are going to also close. And there, there are some countries that are also uh, in transition and uh, will maybe uh, take some, draw some lessons from Ivory Coast. Uh, in, in order to get to exit the crisis. And also, uh, I think about one of your, um, uh, of Liberia, uh, you're one of your neighbors, which will have elections at the end of the year and which uh, will also have uh, uh, a um, peacekeeping operations, uh, 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 which will be separating uh, from Liberia. Uh, slowly, and there's a there's very imp uh, important discussion, and and I really am happy to speak last because that allows me to be extremely brief because many points have already been made, but all and that can uh, and that's also the French tradition to keep the good wine for the end. I also want to say to you that uh, uh, the. Cr the crisis in Ivory Coast was a personal, uh, really personally upset me because uh, I spent all my uh, infant, uh, childhood in this country and it gave me, and I owe it everything. I learned so many things in Ivory Coast, and uh, including the importance of uh, personal uh, relations, which uh, Minister, Mr. Minister spoke about. And, uh, and that's well, really a great quality of Africa. Uh, 
and uh, I've appreciated it in my work. And, and this crisis, uh, I, I come from the uh, peacekeeping operations and the conflicts. Uh, I was in Somalia, I uh, was also dealt with Iraq, with Rwanda, uh, with the operations in the Great Lakes region. And this is, but this is especially uh, important for, for me, uh, because also because I lived with Kofi Annan at the time, I lived through this with the accords of uh, with uh, Kofi Annan. I was in uh, in Paris, uh, and I see, see uh, really the 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 extraordinary um, voyage that this country has uh, taken since 2003, and I think it's a lesson of hope. It's a lesson uh, to encourage uh, other countries. Uh, because we sometimes who sometimes wonder if they're going to be able to resolve uh, their their their, situ their condition and the Ivory Coast is really a good example uh, which combines different elements uh, which I'd like to discuss with you uh, perhaps and it's a it's a personal reflection that I make with with with, with uh, my students in the University of Columbia and, uh, Columbia and the first question that we pose when we speak about the Ivory Coast is how, how can the pa country which was which was such a welcoming country, a country of of social cohesion, social uh, extraordinary, uh, and and uh, in, uh, and for 30 years after its independence, and Ivory Coast did not follow the same uh, road as many others. We, uh, countries had conflicts. It was in peace for three decades. Extraordinary. For, for, for almost uh, three decades, and uh, before the conflict in 2002, what happened? Uh, how did a how can a country uh, turn over like this, uh, turn the corner like this? Uh, a, a country with such welcoming, uh, extraordinary welcoming, uh, country of uh, welcomed immigrants from all the region, particularly from Burkina Faso. Uh, how can this? How did this country uh, uh, capsize? Uh, this is the question I, I, I uh, pose with my students, and uh, and we look at the deep roots of this country. And I say this because the work that Ivory Coast has done uh, in order to exit the crisis is so extraordinary. And it was during this, uh, it, uh, the, uh, other uh, they have advantage that had the other countries did not have is that it didn't have a, a crisis, it didn't have um, a, a struggle, uh, armed struggle for 30 years, and um, a conflict for 30 years. And the the, the fact that the, 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 what were the causes of the conflict, and you can't uh, establish con uh, cohesion, uh, peace, if you don't uh, elucidate the, the 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 underlying causes of the crisis. And I think that the, the, it's uh, it's, just, the, the it's a, this element of strategy, important element of strategy. Um, and therefore, the Ivory Coast, which was the, where immigration uh, was very important in this country, mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden put into question its identity and raised the question of what is an, Iv uh, an Ivorian and uh, who can participate in elections. And it's a really difficult question and dangerous question in a country which has um, uh, really uh, welcomed so many uh, foreigners. And uh, and must return to the question and think about this question of identity, identity, and and it therefore for thirty for ten years uh, of its life, uh, it lived in a philosophy of exclu exclusion of marginalization uh, of certain ca categories categories of the population, uh, poor electoral ends uh, essentially, uh, political ends, and and it's really tragic that uh, to see. Uh, to, to translate a, a notion like uh, Ivority uh, creates such a cr profound crisis. Uh, and this is really a great uh, lesson to draw from this is that I, I know other countries uh, have also come very close to the precipice but refuse to uh, fall. Uh, but a lesson to uh, draw is there. Uh, uh, is the question of uh, what is identity? Uh, I think, Mr. Minister, uh, I think your crisis exiting is a process. And the next elections uh, will probably uh, prove this. 
if uh, if the uh, if it will prove that the basis for a, for a long-standing uh, uh, tr peace will are, are there. And I also want to underline that this that this discussion today is very important in the framework of the United Nations in this big debate, wide debate in the general in the national the Security Council and the General Assembly of what is a long-lasting peace. And we speak of a consolidating peace, a consolidating peace after a conflict. But the real the really deep question is, which is posed in uh, in our school, which is an international school at Columbia, how to define peace. What is the definition of peace? What does that mean uh, to, for, for a country to be in peace? Uh, can we defend uh, this, define it simply by the negative way? That is that, that there's simply no conflict? Is that, that there's no violence? Is that really the aim? Is that the aim of our uh, peacekeeping operations, is to help the country to uh, 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 end violence, or is it more amb ambitious? Is it really a question of helping a country, because that's what we do, to help a country to set up the foundations for peace? Uh, <clears throat> In this new definition of uh, long-lasting peace is in integrating the three pillars, uh, each one being a condition, necessary condition uh, for peace. F number one is uh, security, of course, and the second is uh, development, and the third is, uh, is the, state of, uh, is the uh, rule of law. And the long-lasting peace is integrating these, th these things, I think, uh, Mr. Minister, I think you really, uh, 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 of foreign affairs, I think you, this list of things that you, that you did, replies to the, the, uh, the, the need for security, the need for development, economic development, the need for reconciliation, and also social cohesion. So the great big question remains, how do you get there? How to define peace? And what what is the uh, the, the aim of a, a peacekeeping operation? But not only peacekeeping operations, but also I want to uh, underline that I've rarely seen uh, in the management of conflict, uh, I've rarely seen uh, this type of uh, uh, situation that in the different regions, in the Council of Security Council, in the uh, in the region, and also the international partners, as, as John Pierre said, uh, who really w came together uh, to h help this country uh, exit the crisis. And I, if you look a little bit, uh, uh, because I've I've been I've I've worked with the Security Council in a lot of crises, and I've also found I've also heard many many uh, d deep uh, criticism of the Security Council that it never gives the, the means to the, the the good the tools at the right time that it doesn't work uh, truly in collaboration with the regions or like these or the regional organizations. But if we if we look at the tools that the Security Council has used in the uh, Ivory uh, crisis, it's really impressive to see that not only the Security Council, but also uh, the actors who have participated in this crisis. And and what the lessons that we can draw with, 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 with this, it's, an, it's, it, it's not uh, entirely positive. The, uh, 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 as Mr. Minister uh, and, and Jean-Pierre said also, uh, it, it, it's, it's the, uh, the, the, the will of these actors that, that we, we, they, to try to understand uh, uh, in, a, in, in an academic context, we try to understand uh, in, in this context to, to try to do try to carry on an analysis, and it's it's all it's very impressive that when the when the when the country was was threatened with being cut in in, in half in two thousand and in two thousand and two, it was the uh, the um, ECOWAS which acted the region and who mediated uh, immediately and um, and uh, and said that it would support the mediation. Uh, of, of a peacekeeping operation, and the, the Security Council authorized immediately, and France, on its first side, uh, sent a force, uh, the Licorne Force, uh, and it carried out a, a mediation, which uh, which uh, ended up in the Accords of, the, of 2003, which was really an Accords, a very important Accords, but also tried to convince the Security Council that it did not uh, did not immediately act, and that the members of the certain uh, certain permanent members were very reticent to to engage themselves in the uh, uh, Ivorian crisis, and France therefore and the ECOWAS. Uh, 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 tried to convince the council 
both of them, that, that uh, to, to have the to to authorize the Security Council to uh, send a, a UN force, and uh, the, and and that's when the uh, the uh, ONUC was born in 2004, and it was not easy uh, as it's been described, and I think the Security Council was reticent for financial reasons, as usual, uh, because certain uh, member states had not uh, they did not uh, sufficiently recognize the crisis, and it was necessary to support the region in the uh, the organ regional organization for, for, so that it would uh, commit could make a commitment and uh, if you look at the the, the 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 all of the different tools you can see the chuck tool uh, of the uh, security council was used in the ivorian crisis first of all uh, mediation of course and also a uh, me peacekeeping operation and also uh, when uh, when uh, the ivory coast uh, found itself in an impasse the, the uh, uh, near the war or peace, and they, uh, the Council, National Security Council, used another, um, uh, used another tool, which was Chapter Seven, which was a targeted um, uh, against all organizations which opposed the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the carrying out of the accords and of Marco Cis. And uh, when the Security Council realized that the elections would, would not uh, be taking place because the uh, accord was said that they, they said that they should take place in 2005 and it was being held up in the, the 2006, 2007 and again in 2008 and finally it happened in 2010 and there was uh, such a delay and the, the council again turned to, to other mechanisms and that was uh, the certification of uh, there was a role of certification uh, by the UN was accepted by the United uh, by the uh, Security Council, and the role of the first uh, Prime Minister was reinforced, and 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 all of that led to the uh, the the Accord of and and the uh, uh, and and therefore and the uh, the peace process was taken up and it was proposed uh, 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 and, the, and the proposed uh, a different approach was proposed and it was not dictated by any state and member state by the by the Missouri council and and everyone was surprised but uh, but indeed uh, that uh, led to the accords between Burkina Faso, the Gulabi Coast, and the uh, and the new forces and the Force Nouvelle and the pre president, and this is the country that the country decided it. The, the Security Council didn't decide it, and so I want to also say that these uh, peacekeeping operations were not uh, um, uh, were also with the government worked closely with the government, and it functioned for uh, a, a decade almost without uh, with uh, with. Uh, with uh, agreement uh, and made it, without agreement, it made the situation very diff diff difficult, and therefore arriving at peace was very difficult for the UN because because the maintain peacekeeping was you know, in a role. The peacekeeping was criticized by certain member states, and it was uh, and it was also and it and it was uh, questioned its impartiality, and uh, and it made it the situation very difficult. Uh, difficult. It was very. Uh, it, this was whole, all of this made it very difficult, and there, therefore once again it, there was a concertation between uh, the organizations uh, in the region. Who didn't agree with the uh, organization, the original organization, on the management of the uh, of the crisis in uh, Ivory Coast and uh, the use of force, and and the uh, and there was a lot of mediation, and there was a setup. Uh, 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 finally, to arrive at the last tool, which was used at the UN, which was using force. And uh, and the question that must be raised was why. Did the Security Council, in re in this, despite all the tools that it used, despite uh, the existence of an, uh, a peace, a peace, game a peace game operation, just despite having a parallel force, which was you, which was sent by by France, which w which had all the means uh, author authorized by the Security Council, uh, all the means necessary uh, to uh, take uh, an action and use the force and uh, support the uh, 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 on the sea well, why despite all that uh, it's sanctions mediation then security council had so much difficulty 
to uh, set uh, to to uh, to to make the to make the the, the uh, Ivorian government respected, and this is the, this is the question have to be uh, posed. There were divisions again between the region and the uh, the organization regional, and in the uh, council and there's ended Security Council at certain times, uh, but, but despite all this. All of this uh, led to a process which led the Ivory Coast to reconciliation, and uh, and the lesson to be drawn is uh, the lessons are enormous. And if you look at the again at the uh, question of long-lasting peace, it's true that the uh, uh, peace game organizations can't operate can substitute for a, a, a process, peace process. And the Ivory Coast found uh, itself uh, has supported uh, was, was supported in this piece of process. The second question that must be raised is uh, when there is a sort of exit, sort of exit, uh, crisis exiting, there's a certain fragility. And therefore, you must consider it, uh, to consider it simply as an end in itself, uh, as sort of the exit, uh, cross, uh, exit so crisis exiting, must be seen as a step stage. And it must, uh, you, you must, uh, again, uh, support uh, by by the uh, international community, but by, by the uh, 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 Ivorian government. It's a question of leadership. The, the, the Ivory, Ivory Course had a lot, it was very lucky uh, to have a president who now has taken leadership of its country and who uh, understands that the accompanying this, in, in uh, 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 he must uh, continue regarding his population, the uh, uh, peace process. But uh, I think that peace is something like health. It, uh, you can have it one day, but you can, can lose it next day. And it takes a lot of attention. Enormous amount of accompanying uh, um, by the president, an enormous for effort by the population. And uh, there's no uh, peace that can uh, last in a, co a country that's had such a deep crisis without really these three pillars which we spoke about, the security, the development, and, uh, and, uh, and the state of law, um, uh, all three must be uh, accompanied by great efforts. And therefore, the, de the development of Ivory Coast, uh, economic development is, uh, is terrific, uh, great. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it, uh, it was 9% at a certain point. But uh, obviously, uh, the economic development cannot simply uh, lead to reconciliation. So there's another way, to, another uh, avenue that must be followed. And uh, this takes a lot of time. It's a very long um, uh, process. And I don't think it's an end in itself the, uh, to end the crisis. I, I want to once again exp express my uh, profound exp uh, exp uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, support uh, for the Ivory Coast and uh, wish them great luck uh, and uh, w want to return to the Ivory Coast or the, the, as it was for so long and and also this uh, economic uh, 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 bound uh, in a, in a forward and there are a lot of other things that we must be discuss discussed but I'm trying to be brief I'm sorry, I caught the uh, virus of the, uh, the Security Council. The shock member of the Security Council begins by him saying, I'm going to be brief. And uh, they always uh, speak for an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, don't, I, 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 excuse my, I want to express my excuses. Uh, Mr. The Minister, you have all my admiration. We had a good 45 minutes of discussion. And since English and French are the official languages, of the United Nations, I will take two minutes to summarize in four points what I heard personally. Five lessons, quickly. The first one, which is music to my ear as a former member of the high-level panel on peace operation, the primacy of politics. I think you've heard the minister explaining what that means. Second, national ownership. National ownership comes with responsibility to implement what was agreed and commitment to honor what was agreed. Three, leadership. Um, leadership, you have heard, to undertake the difficult reforms that are necessary to make the recovered peace less reversible. 
Fourth, partnership at all levels within the United Nations, between the country and the region, all the international partners working for the same goal. And last but not least, a, a strategy of accompaniment, a strategy to ensure that the remaining challenges to peace are constantly kept in view and reinforced through development, through human rights, through the rule of law, and obviously peace and security. It's this, la pérennisation de la paix, which is a constant um, um, project. Without further ado, j'ouvre la parole à celui ou celle qui voudrait l'apprendre. Monsieur l'ambassadeur du Maroc, vous avez la parole. Voilà. Oui, un micro qui vient vers vous. Monsieur le ministre, Monsieur le secrétaire général. Monsieur le ministre, Monsieur le général secrétaire, Monsieur Melinda Mayer, je voudrais vous remercier, Monsieur le ministre, pour cette initiative pour organiser ce panel, pour apprendre de votre expérience et aussi pour parler de votre candidature à la Sécurité du Conseil. Il y a beaucoup de leçons qui ont été expliquées ici. Je suis dear to all, I would like to insist on three lessons that rest on three concepts, fatality, hope, and inspiration, fatality. All cri every crisis, uh, I wouldn't say uh, not a perinization, but I, it's not a fatality, and uh, Ivory Coast just proved it because of a certain number of fundamentals that were explained by all the panelists the legitimity of leadership. Second, uh, the appropriation of political process. Third, and you spoke about partnerships, it's the partner partnership in the implementation of this process politic political process. The success of RSS, the inclus inclusiveness of partners, reconciliation, but an, another element that's fundamental is the rule of law. The choice that was made in Ivory Coast is a choice for democracy and rule of law, because without this respect, there is there cannot be any peace. The, the peace cannot last. Peace is like health. If you take care of it, then you keep it. Second lesson is the lesson for Africa, hope. Mr. Your country gave hope to Africa. All country, all African countries are capable of, of coming out of the crisis. All countries, or African countries can exit for their crisis and wars. So there is hope for the continent. And second, third lesson, inspiration inspiration when will you when you are a member of the security council you will be the only country that can speak of what you know about you will draw lesson when there are debates on the situation of for instance in mali in congo in somalia in libya or yemen you will speak about you will intervene and drawing lessons, not as a lesson giver, but as a country that went through a crisis and that can help overcome problems and manage to exit the crisis. And I will conclude with a historical case why the Ivory Coast, uh, why did this happen in Ivory Coast? I w w would like to speak about 50 years before the golden years of Ivory Coast diplomacy. We are in, currently in a process in the UN of the, talking about the reform of the, social of the Security Council. In the 60s, there was already a discussion on reforming the Security Council, widening the Security Council. 
Ivory Coast was already a ca candidate for to be a new permanent member uh, of the Security Council to represent Africa. This, to say that you were already a model at the time, and now you're a model for peace, moderation. Now you're a model for crisis exit, crisis exit, a model for democracy and for development, because according to some statistics, uh, the Ivory Coast can, in the coming years, a high rate rate of a double digit rate of development. Thank you. Good luck, Mr. Minister. I, I am sorry to spoil the fluent French French era. I studied French, but it's all gone because of Omar. You know, Omar is responsible. Can I speak in English? Of course you can. There uh, is Minister, translation. Minister, I'll speak French another day. <laughs> Minister, thanks very who much. Who are you? Oh, my name is Jerry from South Africa. Welcome, Jerry. The ambassador of South Africa. They, they say I'm ambassador of South Africa, but yeah. I'm just Jerry. <laughs> uh, moderator. This is a good story coming from the continent. It's such a great pleasure that sometimes the continent had good stories so that not everything is doomed. <clears throat> Secondly, I think, um, um, as Omar was saying, and I listened to the translation, it's a very, very good um, uh, living education we can draw in terms of peacekeeping operation. Uh, and I'm sure my colleague on your right hand side is taking copious notes on uh, how to conclude operation. Now, <coughs> Minister, can I ask three questions? In this important story, where were ordinary people, ordinary people in the villages and cities, were they accompanying this process? And how were you interacting with ordinary people during this process mm -hmm. for you to ensure this ownership mm -hmm. of the process? Mm -hmm. The second thing, uh, minister and panelist, how, how were the social services? Schools, were they running hospitals? What was happening to ordinary people's services? during this process? Were there changes? What has happened in this process? And um, uh, lastly, Minister, your neighborhood. How was your neighbor, your neighborhood? Because um, I'm sure you have uh, could give wise a lot of neighbors. How was the situation in the neighborhood? Were the neighborhood also buying in this process of peace in the Kudiba? Thanks, Minister. But I, as I say, I think it's a very good story to tell. Thanks very much. Thank you. On notre Mr. Ambassador from Niger, thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I would like to intervene in my quality of representative of a country that contributes from the very beginning of the crisis with a military battalion of uh, soldiers and policemen and to see that today, in spite of the losses, my country uh, had uh, that his sacrifice was not for nothing because uh, it, it allowed uh, a good uh, exit cri crisis. And, um, and I see that this mission, peacekeeping operation, uh, will end, and I was uh, myself uh, served as part of the peacekeeping and I measure the the way and I would like so much to say how much what I heard here from Mr. Minister or from Mr. Lacroix or from Ms. Mrs. Linda Meyer concerning all these aspects that were developed. But in my opinion, since I present myself as a pure product of peacekeeping because I spent seven and a half years in my career in peacekeeping. What I, re what I uh, is the firmness of the Security Council. At s some point, all the various international actors are be firm to 
uh, overcome the obstacles when when they are on the way in order to continue peacekeeping the, uh, my uh, see what is the attitude of the region or, or also the traditional chiefs who are a lot of uh, influence in their country that are considered like an integral part of uh, Ivory Coast society. I would like to say that in for us in West Africa, Ivory Coast is a key actor, is the first economy of our region. It, it um, lets in all the other components of the other countries. So to see today peace, growth, and development in Ivory Coast can only be good for the ECOWAS and the effort made by ECOWAS from the very beginning of the crisis in 2002 with the military contingent and being involved in the peace process and negoti negotiating uh, with ECOWAS is a very example for other regions of Africa that also know peacekeeping operations that are not as successful as in Ivory Coast. Thank you. I will give the floor to the minister because there is a question that was asked by the representing permanent representative of South Africa. It was in three point, how to reinforce national appropriation by involving the traditional chiefs. Second, what kind of social services peace needs for the population, and also what the dimension of the na neighborhood, your particular neighborhood and what measures you take to manage this aspect. I'd like, first of all, to thank the ambassador of Morocco for his, uh, sp for his speech. He didn't ask any questions, but, uh, but he drew important lessons from uh, what, uh, uh, from the cri Ivorian crisis and, um, and the enrichment that uh, it uh, brought to, uh, to countries and to men, to people, and the mode of functioning that we today have uh, compared to what we had in the past, and also uh, to the nature of the relations that we have with one with each other in Ivory Coast. And I'd like uh, also take advantage of the uh, of his uh, speech to say that Ivory Coast does not come uh, to the, uh, the Security Council as a giver of lessons. On the contrary, we come to the Security Council to learn from the world what the world has shown in, in uh, uh, exiting crises in all humility. And each time that there's a need, uh, 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 the, the, our country will learn and will offer to other countries our little experience. Uh, Mr. Um, Ambassador from South Africa, thank you for your friendly uh, uh, words. It's true that uh, Africa has often undergone uh, deforming crises uh, and hasn't functioned well, not w enough, uh, uh, according to what it could function. And for us Ivorians, uh, uh, it's not only for us, but uh, for the African general, because there's not it's not just in Ivory Coast today that uh, the the things uh, there's functioning the question of functioning of the continent, uh, the continent is evolving, developing, and having uh, de deep going changes, that and each actor is uh, impacted, and uh, it's Africa today is not the same as in the past, and tomorrow will be different, and I want to thank you for your for your comments. And uh, and uh, respond, reply to some of your worries. Uh, it's true that uh, here, if if we have known a certain success and uh, exited the crisis, it's because the population took took on um, bought in to the uh, crisis exit crisis exiting. I, and my sister, I speak of her as my sister because it is my she is my Ivorian sister. 
Um, and uh, she, as she said, uh, you know, um, the crisis is born uh, from an identity crisis, uh, among other things. And, and you have a conflict which becomes a, an armed conflict b because of an identity crisis mainly, uh, but also because of uh, r rural uh, land problems, etc. You cannot uh, get out of the crisis if the population does not uh, commit itself to exiting the crisis. And, and to commit itself, uh, you, you must give them tools that allow them to exit the crisis. Uh, starting in 2011, when we, uh, when we had the accord, we had the, we had the uh, Gulf um, crisis, and we, and we created, created the CDVR, the Commission for Dialogue and Truth and Conciliation. In, in order to allow the population through this um, commission a, a little bit to, 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 to have a little bit of an exorcism in order to allow everyone to speak to try to understand what were the, the motor by the force behind this crisis and understand uh, uh, mutually the errors that, that were done and why? Because uh, when you understand why, you can understand, to, you can avoid it tomorrow. And so uh, there was that. And also the uh, necessity um, to, uh, to listen to the victims. Because it's very important in this type of process at a certain time to give the word, to give, give the floor to the victims. Uh, listen to their suffering. And and try to bring to them the solutions that you can bring, and uh, therefore the CDVR uh, cha uh, changed into the Com National Commission uh, of Indemnization of the Victims, and the indemniz ind indemnization became a pl of, um, entire ministry, as I told, uh, said, and therefore the entire population felt uh, part of the process, and also. Um, the fact that there was a symbi symbiosis between the government and the operations of the United Nations to, uh, in order to, uh, so that the uh, um, ONUC would would become an ally of the of the population and be seen as an instrument to pr that protect the population and helps them to exit from the crisis. And the uh, ONUC uh, had carried out a certain number of social actions in the villages, in the in, in the rural areas, the uh, 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 dis dispensaries, uh, uh, sometimes uh, roads, and that in that way. Uh, the, the population felt uh, implicated in the process, and we also used um, the, the traditional uh, avenues. Uh, you, you know, the constitutional uh, 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 created a cha uh, uh, the cha cha chamber of, of, of kings, and uh, uh, and the and the president of the, of the chamber of kings was the, was the number, was the number six or seven in the Ivorian state because we understood what could be the role of the chiefs, the traditional chiefs, these kings, uh, because of their credibility uh, in the population. What could be their role in the process? process? Uh, what, how did you say, my sister? In, 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 instead of consolidating peace, you need, you need durable peace. And in this, in this, uh, in this, in this, in this uh, uh, process of carry, of, carry of, of of creating a durable peace, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ivory Coast uh, came out of the crisis in 2011. In six years, you don't uh, stabilize a country. It's a long process, uh, which has uh, ups and downs. Uh, uh, you, you know, in January 2017, you had the events, and there could be others. Um, there's a ten, but the tendency must be toward exiting the crisis and to the durability of the cri of the peace. And therefore, you must use all, uh, everyone, all the tendencies, all the tools that can contribute to uh, achieve the objective. And as you indicated, uh, in, uh, in, in 2020, it'll be a real barometer to, to test, to measure the capacity, the ability of the of Ivory Coast to to exit the crisis in a, in a durable way.
uh, on question of social services, uh, I'm not going to get bring uh, cite some uh, statistics, but but uh, uh, one of the strengths of our economy is the is the uh, fixing up the infrastructure, in including basis structure, health, uh, sc schooling, uh, roads, uh, drinking water, access to to uh, electricity. A lot of things have been done, and uh, what this uh, this allowed to uh, it's, 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 even if it's insufficient, so the, the population feels it uh, in their daily lives. Uh, it, 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 we distribute growth, and this is being a big problem. Uh, is the question of liberal economy? It's it's uh, not it's okay to have growth, but uh, but when you speak about nine percent of growth, et cetera, et cetera, what are you speaking of? Uh, uh, if, but, but if tomatoes are expensive in the mar market, this is the problem of the Ivory, Ivory Coast. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not just a problem of the Ivory Coast, it's a capitalist problem. Uh, you, must, you must achieve a, a growth rate which is felt in the improvement of the conditions of the population. On the uh, concerning our neighbors, you, we we very quickly uh, realize that we cannot uh, uh, arrive at a durable peace uh, uh, in Ivory Coast without having good relations with our neighbors, and especially the uh, the, the Ghana, Burkina, Mali, uh, and Liberia, uh, which are which are close neighbors. Um, and so the relations with these uh, countries were, were uh, improved with uh, the countries uh, uh, of the region. And in order to that, we, we've had certain conflicts. Uh, countries would, would reg settle the, the conflicts with certain countries. And uh, so we've had good collaboration with Ghana. We have a lot of um, with uh, refugees from uh, Liberia. Uh, we have a lot of refugees uh, from uh, from other countries. Uh, we also have uh, questions of inter uh, domestic security because uh, there was instability uh, in Ghana and Liberia. We uh, tried to, with our neighbors to have uh, uh, pr privileged uh, relations, and what it allowed the, the President Dutra, uh and uh, to be uh, president of the uh, um, uh, ECOWAS du du twice. He refused a third mandate because uh, uh, he didn't think third mandates were called for. Um, uh, during his mandate, uh, we regulated the problem of Mali, uh, also of uh, Guinea-Bissau, uh, which was an important, uh, big problem. And uh, the ambassador from Ni Ni Nigeria uh, s uh, re reminded how many of uh, how these countries were very much implicated in the crisis, and uh, they sent battalions, the, the Galian, Congolese, uh, Senegalese, Senegalese, etc. Uh, and I think that today, uh, with uh, this this region, the the, the we it's now calmed down. And uh, the Ivory Coast now can, can uh, I, uh, so, uh, exit the uh, crisis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, I think the microphone um, is being brought up. Ambassador of Mali, thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you to share your experience with us. I don't have a specific question, but I would like to say how proud I am to see Ivory Coast the locomotive of uh, South West Africa take pa take its place. What you said about the exit strategy, uh, we will remember it. Mali is in crisis. That in the uh, Security Council is also evolved, and it uh, the model of uh, Ivory Coast inspires me and makes me hope that we will uh, solve our problem also. I wish you the best for your candidacy of the uh, uh, non-permanent seat at the Security Council, and bravo for the success. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Jean-Claude Orego, permanent representative of Bénin. I would like to also uh, my, say with uh, my uh, brothers of the sub-region to mention about the excellent relationship we have in the ECOWAS member, 
the uh, with Ivory Coast. Uh, the example of Ivory Coast will be a model. We were able to show that we had in our midst the, the means to find solutions to our problems in the region. The small question or the small comment I would like to make uh, and, and, and ask also the other panelists is to know in the framework of reinforcement of in intra-regional relations and the reinforcement of sub-regions, what is your vision regarding exit crisis or facilitations for peacekeeping that could create the impulse to facilitate what Mrs. Lindemeyer uh, reminded us about, that is reticence on the part of the Security Council. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Uh, I'll give you the last word to close this session. I would like to thank the representative of Benin. He didn't, he didn't say the minister. He didn't say. He didn't ask the minister. He said whoever wants. But I will. Make, I will play, play my role, do my share. I think that each time there is a risk in a subregion, and that the countries get together to a leadership, because leadership is just not just one man. When we talk about the ECOWAS, can be a, num or a, a man or a woman. And when we talk about the ECOWAS, it's 15 states. So it's the leadership uh, of 15 heads of state. For example, to a, f a simple example, Gambia. It's the best example, re recent example, of leadership of the, of the ECOWAS to solve a problem in a subregion. The problem is solved. I hope that things are on a good track. It's true that we need a little bit of money to maintain this, the ECOWAS forces in Gambia. But it's the best example I can give. There must be a political will, there must be a leadership of the ECOWAS, and we must give ourselves the means. Thank you. I thank you, Mr. Minister. I consulted my neighbor to the right. He he said what uh, you had to say. I didn't consult Elizabeth. Do, do you want to say? My last word would be to reply to the question. But just to tell you that I very much appreciated your question regarding the role of the people. And if we talk about uh, this concept of um, uh, sustainable peace, as you know, this is one of the conditions, this inclusive ownership, because the ownership of the government, we, I think we all agree, and, but the inclusive ownership, the government with its people and all the stakeholders of the country is something which is much more difficult to do. So I very much enjoy your question as to where were the people, and I asked the same question to uh, the minister, as a matter of fact, before coming. How do you consult with your people now? Now, how do you take them with you? And I think uh, the minister answered very well, uh, you know, already. Uh, but thank you for the question, because I think this is something very new also, this inclusi inclusive ownership that we are asking a country to do. So that's all I wanted to say. Je donne uh, l'occasion à mon collègue de droite de se raviser. Uh, I think something was said about uh, the um, uh, unity of the region. We spoke about Gambia. There's also a good news that uh, we are seeing in this part of Africa a, um, a dynamic of a, a partnership for growth uh, and for peace in uh, Benin. Benin. There's another example, of is, which is the um, Sahel Initiative, um, of, of the ECS Initiative in Sahel, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, there's also, in a bit unusual uh, formats, uh, there's a positive dynamic uh, particip participation. Uh, in a innovative work and uh, 
And so this is also uh, a, a reply to uh, the question of uh, bidding. Uh, and so this is, this is the end of our meeting. Uh, I, I invite you to applaud.